Today, we will look at creating one of those low-poly VR hands that we often see in various VR games. True to form, I will keep it as low-poly as possible while maintaining full finger articulation, meaning all fingers can bend individually and are not fused together like so. Some games does that, but let's give ours full articulation while still maintaining a low-poly status that deforms perfectly. Drag out a box and did it off one side of it leaving only a single plane. Or you could just drag out a plane, it doesn't matter. Move the points into place and subdivide it just enough to be able to extrude out four more fingers like so. You might want to pause the video to copy the topology here. Apply the solid define modifier to add thickness to our currently flat hand. Put in in-between lines across the finger so that you can dent it in because this is the general form of the human finger, though you might want to exaggerate it a little because of the low poly nature of it all. Cut a middle line across the whole hand so that you can round off the fingers and thumb a little. Wait, why am I doing this? Why do I slant the line of the fingers like this? This. This is the secret to perfect low-poly finger deformation. In extreme low-poly mode, the form of the finger will collapse onto itself when it bends. This is decidingly not cool. Sure, in Blender, we have awesome features like preserve volume, but some game engines don't have that. Mid poly models does not have that problem because there are more than enough points to hold the form of the finger during deformation. But low poly can look good. It can look very good if we were to slant the lines like so. There are three major advantages to this. First, it doesn't require blending, meaning no two bones share the same point. Till this day, there are still some game engines that only allow vertices to be influenced by one bone with no blending capabilities, so that is good. Second, it's low poly. And finally, it looks so good. The form holds so well, it looks so legit. Mm. Duplicate that one finger a couple of times, scale and weld them into place to complete the form. Everything from here on out is optional. I have decided to add in one more line here to add just a little more structural detail, but the overall hand model is still extremely low poly at about 200 faces. Some hands in VR games have over 400 polygons and they don't even have full five fingers articulation. This is even more optional. I have taken the liberty to curve in the palm a little because the hand is not flat in its natural state. It could be flat, it just isn't in its natural state. And this awesome low poly rigging trick isn't applicable to just the finger joints. It extends all the way back to where the finger connects to the palm. Now anatomically speaking, this isn't correct because the webbing of the hands require the topology to flow this way. But the low poly trick requires you to flow the lines in the opposite direction. That's fine. As far as low poly is concerned, I will give everything for a hand model that looks amazing while it deforms and bends than having one that only looks good if it stays relatively static. Now you know the trick. And this technique can be applied throughout the low poly body. The elbow, the knee, and if you have a little imagination just a little bit, the head and neck area as well, but I will leave that to you because it will be far more satisfying for you to discover it yourself since you already know the juice. I would appreciate if you were to join my Patreon if you like what you have seen here. This is Bristol Jack signing off and I will see you next week.